Hello there and welcome to Level Update. Today, we'll take a closer look at the latest developments surrounding the water levels at Lake Powell and Lake Mead as of mid-October 2025. These two reservoirs, the most critical in the Colorado River Basin, have once again shown a split in their trends. Lake Powell continues to climb, while Lake Mead is facing renewed pressure and a small but notable decline. We'll dive into the numbers, analyze what's behind these movements, and discuss what this means for the months ahead. Starting with Lake Powell, there's finally some good news that many have been waiting to hear. The most recent data shows the lake sitting at an elevation of 3545.49 feet, which means the reservoir is currently around 413 feet deep at the dam. Powell remains about 154 feet below full pool, but the important story isn't how far it is from the top, it's how much it's been rising lately. The reservoir is now up 1.46 feet from its lowest level of the water year, showing a steady and encouraging recovery trend that's directly connected to an unusual and powerful pattern of inflows from the upper Colorado River system. According to the data, inflows for the 2026 water year have already reached 332,730 acre feet, which is above the average for this time of year. This represents around 107% of the historical mean, a strong indicator that the upper basin has been sending more water downstream than usual. Much of this improvement comes from Colorado, where a combination of late-season storms and heavy flooding in parts of the state have pushed large volumes of runoff toward Powell. The result has been a notable improvement in storage conditions. Water storage this year has risen by over 51,000 acre-feet, and inflows have exceeded outflows by nearly 67,000 acre-feet. If we look at the graph for Lake Powell's water level over the last 12 months, the trend tells a compelling story. The reservoir experienced a gradual decline through winter and early spring, bottoming out around mid-April. But since then, the level began to rebound modestly through summer, and more recently, that increase has accelerated. What makes this recent rise so remarkable is that it comes at a time of year when Powell typically stabilizes or even declines. That shift suggests stronger-than-expected inflows from upstream rivers, most notably from the Colorado and Green Rivers, which are still running above average at nearly 113% of typical October flows. The Upper Basin's 34 tracked reservoirs are currently holding nearly 70% of total capacity, another positive signal that the system as a whole is healthier than it was last year. In fact, when comparing to October 2024, Lake Powell is down only about 31 feet from that period. But this drop doesn't tell the full story. Much of the lost volume earlier in the year has already been partially recovered. The recent inflows and reduced releases from Glen Canyon Dam, now sitting at only 3.5% of the annual minimum release requirement, have allowed more water to be retained in the system. These are small adjustments, but they make a big difference over time. Looking forward, if the inflow rate remains strong and temperatures stay mild, Powell could maintain or even slightly increase its level through the rest of autumn. The upcoming snowpack season will be critical, but the strong early performance of water year 2026, already at 186% of last year's inflow volume at the same date, sets the stage for cautious optimism. Simply put, the lake is finally showing resilience again after years of decline. Now shifting focus downstream to Lake Mead, the situation there is not as encouraging. The most recent measurement from October 17th shows Lake Mead at an elevation of 1157.61 feet, down nearly 6 feet compared to the same time last year. 
the reservoir currently holds about 31.8% of its total capacity, with a storage deficit of roughly 162 feet below its full pool elevation of 1,219.6 feet. This means that while Powell is benefiting from upstream water retention, Mead continues to feel the effects of limited inflow and ongoing outflow obligations. The most recent chart of Lake Mead's level over the past 12 months paints a clear picture of the challenges ahead. The reservoir peaked briefly in late February, reaching about 1068 feet, but since then it has steadily declined, losing over 10 feet through spring and summer. A small uptick in September and early October suggests minor recovery from late summer rains, but the overall downward slope remains evident. Inflows for the 2026 water year are running at about 110% of last year's levels, which sounds positive at first, but it's still not enough to offset the steady outflows from Hoover Dam, which continue at nearly 260,000 acre feet so far this year. In contrast to Powell, Lake Mead storage has fallen by approximately 469,000 acre feet since the start of the new water year. That's a substantial reduction, highlighting the fact that even modest upstream gains can't yet overcome the heavy downstream water demands that continue to draw from mead supply. The rivers feeding into the lake are also underperforming relative to expectations, running at roughly 83% of their October average, which further limits the inflow potential. The imbalance between these two reservoirs is becoming more pronounced. While Powell's rise is directly the result of the strong runoff and upstream water management strategies, Mead's slow decline reflects the lingering challenges of balancing water deliveries to lower basin states and maintaining hydroelectric output at Hoover Dam. The contrast between the two reservoirs shows how interconnected and yet how independently variable their behavior can be. For those watching both lakes closely, the takeaway is that 2025 has been a year of cautious but meaningful improvement for Lake Powell. The Colorado River's powerful late-season surge and the resulting floodwaters have given Powell a much-needed boost and a sign that it can stabilize under the right conditions. Meanwhile, the continued strain at Lake Mead is a reminder that the lower basin still faces structural water imbalances that require careful management and potentially further coordination with upstream operations. As of today, both reservoirs combined hold just under 60% of their designed full capacity. That's far from ideal, but the recent trends suggest a gradual rebalancing could be underway. The hope is that the strong inflows from the Colorado system will persist into the coming months, allowing Powell to continue its climb and eventually deliver more water downstream to stabilize Mead in the future. So, while the headlines may sound mixed, good news for Powell, bad news for Meade, the deeper story is one of small but steady progress in parts of the basin. The Colorado floodings have temporarily reversed some of Powell's decline, and every extra foot gained helps build a more stable foundation heading into the winter season. Meanwhile, for Lake Mead, the focus remains on managing outflows carefully to prevent further drops. In the weeks to come, all eyes will be on the inflow trends from the upper basin and the snowpack forecasts across the Rockies. But for now, it's safe to say that Lake Powell is on the rise again, bringing the sense of optimism that has been missing for a long time, while Lake Mead continues to struggle, holding steady for now, but still searching for lasting relief downstream. As we wrap up, it's clear that the story of Lake Powell and Lake Mead remains one of contrast, a tale of recovery upstream and challenge downstream. Lake Powell's steady rise, fueled by powerful inflows and the unexpected help of Colorado's floodwaters, is the good news the basin has been waiting for. It's proof that the system can still respond when nature and timing align. But for Lake Mead, the road ahead remains steep, 
with continued drawdowns reminding us that balance in the Colorado River system is delicate and hard-earned. Still, every foot gained at Powell brings a glimmer of hope for what lies ahead. Thanks for watching, and if you've been following the journey of these reservoirs with us, make sure to stay tuned. We'll keep tracking every rise, every fall, and every new sign of change across the Colorado River Basin.